welcome back again to the new learning and in that context let us continue with our understanding about the various perspective on Indian society and if you can recall the previous discussion that we have, I think uh, we move further on those directions. So, let us listen to those further elaborations that we have in the understanding of the Indian society. So, the initial sociology which we said was seen to be having certain part particularistic model, but on the other hand we also have the universalistic model, especially we have contribution by Professor D. P. Mukherjee who tried to have the historical dialectical mode for analyzing the Indian society, historical dialectical mode for analyzing the Indian society and we try to see that his contribution can be seen in terms of putting Marxian understanding, Marxian understanding and his contribution with regard to the understanding of Indian society. Now, we also try to have what B. D. Gupta said that the Indology and the religio philosophical issues Indology and the religio philosophical issues had been the important concern and these things have been taken up by people like Professor R. N. Saxena. Then we also have A. K. Saran and Y. B. Damle who had adopted the religio philosophical tone and also they try to see the understanding which took place with regard to Indology and the religio philosophical domain. So, the pre independent India had these uh, uh, changes and even the post India uh, independent India also had certain measures which have been taken up by these people in their own way. Now, along with that we also try to see when I said earlier that there were sociology in India and sociology for India. Now, this distinction in terms of the academic debate it basically started with the two seminars which were conducted at two different period of time especially in 1960s a seminar which was conducted in Agra and it was basically for sociology in India. And along with that we had another seminar that was in Mount Abu and this was basically for sociology for India. So, these two seminars were very crucial to see the trajectory of sociology which has grown through time. The issues were in these seminars were whether the sociology of India should be part of the global sociology or it should be seen as the Indianness of the various concepts and uh, categories, classifications, approaches and methods. So, are we going to have the contribution of sociology along with global sociology or should we have the Indianness of the Indian sociology in terms of concepts, classifications, theories. Now, here the contribution of Indradev or his statement is going to be significant. He says that Indian sociology should be seen as a body of concept and generalizations. which are applicable to the Indian society. I think this is a, a better understanding that we try to see sociology whose contribution has to be seen in terms of how it is going to be applicable in the Indian society, especially the sociological principles which are derived from the Indian sources and the study of the structure and processes in India are going to be seen as a significant issue. And in that way his statement appears to be more valid because something which is going to be good for understanding Indian society from their sources are going to be the valid statements. Now, here Yogendra Singh who says that the Indian society has to be seen in terms of changing historical political status of the country. I think this is again an important aspect that we have to see the development of sociology in terms of the various historical and the political forces or the changes which took place in the country. 
especially the changing western intellectual contact, how we have shifted from uh, western or the European model towards the American model and later on to certain other issues in that sense as such. Similarly, the native intellectual traditions from where sociology has emerged that again has to be seen in this context as such. So, Yuganda Singh was very right when he was trying to see that sociology has to be seen in terms of the historical and the political changes of the Indian society. Now, we also have in the post independence India, people who have been seen in terms of the specific models, especially we try to see the contribution of the people in terms of the specific framework. And I think this is going to be an important issue, because uh, we can see that how Indian sociology has been carried in the different formats, especially in the post independent India, we have one model that is the comparative historical comparative historical approach, which has been carried by people like G. S. Ghure and K. M. Kapadia. Then we also had the contribution of certain other peoples, especially in terms of philosophical social approach. Philosophical social approach, we are the contribution of Radha Kamal Mukherjee and D. P. Mukherjee appears to be significant. And also along with that, we have the logical philosophical approach. where we have the contribution of a significant prop sociologist professor A. K. Saran. And along with that, the other approaches were the structural functional approach, structural functional approach, where we have significant contribution by professor S. C. Dube, professor M. N. Srinivas, D. N. Majumdar. And along with that, McKim Marriott, so their contribution appears to be significant in the structural functional approach. We also had the stat statistical method approach, where we had significant contribution by people like Victor de Souza. then Anil Bhatt and also we have Ramakrishna Mukherjee. So, their contributions has been seen in the different framework, the philosophical sociological approach, logical philosophical approach, structural functional approach and also the statistical approach. So, these were the different approaches which has been dealt by the different scholars at different period of time. And in this way, we try to see the designing of sociology, especially in terms of the theoretical understanding that took place. Now, what are the new trends, where the sociology is moving? I think uh, this is a, another important aspect that we have to see that the new trends which took place, especially when we try to see the period in and around 1970s and onwards. Now, in that framework, we try to see that the sociological studies have shifted from the continuum framework of analysis to the notion of degree, that how much things have changed in that sense. Then along with that, the Marxist historical method also has gained the momentum with the studies of agrarian structure, the working class and many other issues. Similarly, the other schools, the other ways in which the Indian sociology has been dealt was the application of structuralism. Then we also have ethno sociology and along with that we had the system analysis 
that is the social system analysis and also we had the historical materialistic method and the new Marxian method. New Marxian method for understanding the society at the regional and regional level and also at the macro level. So, we have the macro micro understanding by these different uh, thoughts, these different ways of analyzing the Indian societies. So, I think uh, one thing that we see is that the spectrum of understanding the Indian society has shifted drastically, especially when we try to see in 1970s. Now, we had in 1970s and 80s the establishment of certain institutions, especially we try to cover up the issues or the academic bodies. We had ICSSR that is Indian Council of Social Science Research. We also had the UGC. University Grant Commission. We also have the ICHR that is Indian Council of Historical Research and we also had ICPR that is Indian Council of Philosophical Research. So, these were the important national institutions which were also trying to develop sociology or the social sciences in general in the different ways, especially having the systematic and the scientific rigor with regard to the growth of the discipline. Now, we try to see that we had the new areas where the sociology has to be seen like we have the sociology of development, we also had the sociology of education, we also have the sociology of health. And also we have the sociology of weaker section, which we try to see in more better way in terms of the subaltern schools, the subaltern schools. Now, these are not the other things in that sense as such, we had certain other school of thoughts or the different ways in which sociology has emerged. Like we have sociology of environment. And also we had the sociology which can be seen in terms of their contribution in the science and technology and also we had the shift which took place. Now, we even talk about the sociology and its contribution in terms of the so called biosciences, especially in the area of uh, the biotechnology also we had uh, the understanding of the sociologist. So, I think uh, if you try to see the whole discourse which is to be seen with regard to the emergence of sociology as a discipline, we try to find out that the various works either it is the initial phase of development of sociology with the contribution of the sociology of stratification, the sociology of rural agrarian society or the sociology of the urban society or we have the sociology which was to be seen in terms of the understanding of the social structure. And now we are making a shift in that sense as such. Now, the rural and urban they are not the only things which has to be seen. Now, we have to even have the microscopic or the micro analysis of these societies. Now, we try to see that the caste is been entered into the so called urban or we try to see how the class has entered into the rural. So, I think uh, the polarization which was has been there that caste is with rural and class is with the urban. Now, they are also mesmerizing especially we try to see that how the things the changes which took place. Now, we speak about the studies where the issue of ethnicity is going to be important as such where the so called caste in the urban areas, the ghettoization of caste or may be speaking about the certain amount of regionalization within the city. These aspects are there in that sense as such, which we try to see are being seen in the urban framework. Similarly, we try to see the other issues 
where the rural is being projected in a different way. We have the issues of environment, environmental sensitization. We also have the issues related to the impact of globalization on the rural society. We also try to see that how the, the modern technology is trying to influence upon, the ICT is influencing upon the rural society. And also we try to see that the rural society where we have the competitive classes. So, it is not the, the caste analysis, the caste structure and the mobility which is going to be an important issue. Rather we try to see that the new uh, uh, horizons, the new domains are coming up in both the spheres in that sense as such. Now, the so called society which was been seen, especially the Indian society which was been seen into three sub structures, especially we try to see we had the urban, rural and we have the tribal. And in these different categories, specific categories, we have in the urban the elites, we have in the rural the peasants and in the tribals we have the tribes, the Adivasis. Now, these different categories which were seen as to some extent the isolated whole, especially the linkage between the rural and urban has been there, but the rural and the tribal was Miyagar in that sense. Or if you try to see the linkage between the urban and tribal that was very less. So, now there is a drastic changes, the dynamics which are coming up in a very different way and they try to see the whole world in a more cosmopolitan way, because now it is urban is not the urban alone. We have even the external forces, especially the issue of globalization which is coming up and they are trying to see the things in their own way. So, we try to see that there is bombardment of the various aspects of the various forces of changes, especially when we try to see the contributions, the new readings in that sense as such. We try to find out that uh, even the external agencies like the World Bank or we try to see the other international agencies like ILO or maybe talking about the human development reports. They are trying to see the world in their own way, especially now we have the issue of the diaspora, the Dalit diaspora, the Indian diaspora in that sense, the cultural diasporas which are coming up. We also try to see that the new uh, arrangements are been made, the, the role of an agency, especially the gendered understanding of the society. Like we try to see that uh, how we can locate their gender and their contribution uh, with regard to the development of uh, sociology also, because at some period of time we try to see that we did not have the sociology of gender and we try to see the contribution of Sharmila Rege who tried to build up that can we think about the sociology of gender and then along with that we had certain other works. Similarly, if we try to speak about the issue of the sociology of environment, we have people like Ramchandra Guha who is trying to understand the Indian society in a specific way or we try to see the contribution of Gay Lomwet who is trying to see that how we can speak about the subalchan, especially the contribution of David Hardiman and Ranjit Guha appears to be very significant with regard to the subaltern perspective. Then also we try to have certain other understanding. Vinadas earlier has talked about the issue of ethnosociology at some period of time, but now ethnosociology has not been carried forward by many new scholars in that sense as such. So, somewhere of course, we try to see similarly the contribution of Professor S. C. Dubey with regard to Kamar in terms of the specific ethnography. Now, these aspects are uh, uh, vanishing off in that sense as such. We try to see the significant contributions have been made, but these contributions has not been carried forward in a new way in that sense as such. So, I think uh, somewhere when we try to see the emergence of sociology in the contemporary framework, either we try to speak about the industrial. Now, from industrial we have shifted towards the corporate in that sense as such. So, these changes of societies also has to be captured in a sociological way. So, I think the weakness and the strength of sociology has to be seen in terms of how the various forces of change 
are going to affect upon the societies and how sociology as a discipline as a craft can capture the understanding in a scientific way. So, these are the important concern that one has to see and with regard to the specific contributions or the books if you try to speak about. I think uh, when we try to speak about the emergence of sociology as a distinct uh, discipline, we try to find out that uh, the initial contributions which were seen as the pioneers especially in the field of sociology. Uh, I think uh, one important contribution which we can rate or which we can see is the contribution by Professor T. N. Madan and his important work that is pathways that is approaches to the study of society in India. I think uh, this is a uh, one good book which gives you the good insights about how sociology has developed, what were the contribution of the initial pioneers and also the contribution in terms of the specific perspective. We also have a very significant contribution by Professor Yogendra Singh and the legendary contribution is Indian sociology. Indian sociology and within that we have social conditioning and the emerging concern. Along with that we have the contribution of Professor Yogesh Atal and Indian society uh, Indian sociology from where to where that is a significant contribution which speaks about the development of sociology through different phases of time. We also have the contribution by Professor Ramakrishna Mukherjee. Ramakrishna Mukherjee's contribution that is sociology of Indian society uh, sociology. Now, this is uh, again an important reading sociology of Indian sociology is an important contribution that one can read and along with that we had the contribution by Professor Chikyoman and Parthanath Mukherjee. that is the Indian sociology reflections and retrospect. And also we had Professor T. K. Unithan and others edited book that is sociology for India. I think these are certain classics that we can see uh, which can be thought of as the sort of readings for the readings with regard to this work. And along with that I think uh, another pioneering contribution can be seen by Professor D. N. Dhanagre uh, and the work of course is Indian sociology uh, sorry perspectives on Indian sociology, where we had the ways in which the Indian sociology has been treated has been uh, developed in the historical framework. And apart from that I think uh, if you want to have certain specific readings on caste, on village or maybe on urban I think uh, the special volumes are coming from SAGE and from some of other standard uh, publications which, which are dealings with the specific areas of concern. So, with these contributions I think uh, we can have more better understanding about how sociology has emerged as a discipline. Now, within that we can see the initial phase where the Indological and the paternalistic way of looking to the Indian society was been there or we can have the universalistic model which has been done by Professor Ramakrishna Mukherjee in terms of the philosophical issues or we have the Indianness and the western understanding by so called Professor D. P. Mukherjee or we have the system analysis by Professor Y. M. Damle and many other contributions which can be seen as the pioneer contributions which has grounded the sociology at a very sound footing. And I think with these sound footings the sociology has definitely emerged as one of the distinct discipline in social science proper for understanding the Indian society and the global society in general. So, I think with these words uh, we can 
at least try to consolidate what we have discussed in this whole lecture, especially we try to speak about that what were the social conditionings with regard to the Indian sociology, where we try to speak about the contribution of the various forces, the imprints which have been there with regard to the history and the social forces, the role of nationalism, the role of British colonialism or maybe speaking about the contribution which has been there from the western influence and along with that the missionaries, the administrators how they have contributed towards the understanding of Indian sociology. Then we also try to speak about the various ways in which the various universities where sociology had started like we started with the Bombay school uh, which was seen as one of the pioneer universities where sociology had started as an academic discipline. And finally, we try to speak about the fact that this academic discipline along with Bombay school has been carried forward by to Calcutta, to Lucknow, Mysore, Osmania universities and many other places. Like we try to see that one of the latest and the recent department which started uh, was been at Allahabad university, the department of sociology which started in 2010. So, I think still the sociology has not been established in many prominent universities and one has to really see that uh, sociology either it has been neglected, it has not been projected at the right period of time and in that way we are having these crises which are still establishing. Now, we have the teaching of sociology in IITs, we have in IIMs also sociology. So, I think uh, we try to see that emergence of sociology has now captured many new uh, fronts in which we try to see its growth and also we try to find out that the sort of trajectory in terms of theoretical and methodological issues are also the important concern that one has to see and how it has moved starting from structural functional or trying to speak about the Marxian and now we have the new domains of knowledge, the new perspectives which are coming up, the micro theories of the new school of thought, especially the neo functionalism, the new Marxism in that sense as that even the postmodernism has also been seen as the new frameworks in which sociology has been seen in Indian society. So, I think uh, these are certain issues that one has to really see and deal with when we try to speak about the emergence of sociology as a discipline in India in general and trying to see it in the global framework in particular as such. So, with these words we will end up this uh, lecture and I think we can have many queries for the readings. So, you can just see go through these things as such I try to have certain writings for you also. So, that will be of some use and uh, I think uh, try to learn and teach sociology the pedagogy of sociology definitely has to have an important role in establishing sociology as a distinct discipline. Thank you.